this is an important disease and uh, I want to mention the most important points. Whipple disease, basically it's a, it's a multi-system disease. It can present with uh, so many things like this. There are no particular symptoms. So we say like uh, weight loss, malabsorption and diarrhea. Those are the most common symptoms in Whipple disease. Now let me start with uh, what is the nature of this disease then what is the particular pathology that kind of stuff. Whipple disease as I said it's a multi-systemic illness caused by an infectious uh, bacillus that is Trophorema whipple. So Trophorema whipple is the causative bacillus that is responsible for this. And most commonly this disease affects white men. White men from fourth to sixth decade. That is the patient population. Always remember that. And there are no cases of human to human spread have been documented. So these patients that get this bacillus and they gradually develop clinical manifestations and the clinical manifestations they are proteome. Now arthralgia or migratory non-deforming arthritis it, it happens and it is typically the first symptoms seen in this patient. So arthritis deforming non-deforming sorry non-deforming arthritis is the most common symptom then diarrhea and abdominal pain and some degree of uh, malabsorption and uh, some of them uh, develop abdominal distension and uh, flatulence and uh, that also uh, ultimately leads to steatoria. So all this as malabsorption happens these patients develop weight loss. So the weight loss is the most common presenting symptom seen in almost all patients. And you see, as the malabsorption happens, there will be loss of protein from the intestine that results in protein losing enteropathy. So protein losing enteropathy, uh, it ultimately leads to hypoalbuminemia and the patients then develop uh, edema, then low grade fever because their immunity goes down. There may be some uh, generalized lymphadenopathy, so they develop lymph nodes enlargement all over the body resembling like sarcoidosis. Some of them uh, develop myocardial or valvular involvement. When myocardium is involved then they go into congestive heart failure or valvular regurgitation when the valvular uh, uh, things are happening. Then some of them develop the eye problems like buveitis, itriitis, keratitis and uh, retinitis and ultimately the hemorrhages also, the retinal hemorrhages uh, on the retina. And central nervous system manifestations are also common. They develop dementia, lethargy and seizures and coma. So, so CNS manifestations, eye manifestations and heart manifestations, intestinal manifestations and they also develop cranial nerve problems like ophthalmoplegia and nystagmus. So you see almost all systems involved that's why I said it's a multi-system disease and uh, so remember uh, Whipple disease as a multi-system disease caused by the bacillus Trophorema Whipple. As I said they present with lymphadenopathy and the valvular problems can cause heart murmurs which, are, which can be clues when you do physical examination and you can see that generalized arthropathy and you can see the joint changes and uh, also some of them get uh, hyperpigmentation over the sun exposed areas. Now how do you diagnose people disease? Basically you do a small intestinal biopsy. A small intestinal biopsy, you do the endoscopic procedure and you take uh, a small intestinal biopsy like uh, from for example duodenum and you do the histologic uh, evaluation. So the histologic evaluation is the definitive test for this problem. So in Whipple's disease you see in the biopsy you see like uh, macrophages. The macrophages are defined as pass positive, PA 
Yes, PAS past positive, periodic acid skip positive, uh, macrophages that contain Bacillus Coferama vipelli, which is not acid fast. That's an important thing. This Bacillus is not acid fast. That's an important point. I will tell you later in a minute why it is so important. In some patients uh, who present with uh, non gastrointestinal symptoms, uh, duodenal biopsy may be normal then you have to go to the other organs or lymph node examination is also important in those patients. Now, what about the differential diagnosis? Whipple disease should be considered in patients who present with uh, signs of uh, malabsorption or favor of unknown origin and lymphadenopathy and uh, also seronegative uh, arthritis because you see those are the some of the most common symptoms and signs in these patients so even if you see a multi-system disease you should uh, uh, consider Whipple disease and as I said small bowel biopsy it uh, clearly distinguishes it from other mucosal malabsorptive disorders like celiac pro and uh, also in AIDS for example uh, mycobacterium avium complex the MAC MAC it it, it also causes past positive macrophages, right? So Whipple's disease, it causes past positive and MAC also causes past positive. But the way to distinguish between the two is uh, in Whipple's disease, the bacillus is not acid fast. Whereas in MAC, the bacillus is acid fast. You need to remember that point to distinguish MAC from Whipple's disease. Now there are other things like Reiter syndrome and the familial Mediterranean fever and uh, syphilic vasculitis and the Bessette's disease. And all those diseases uh, you think of in the differential diagnosis of this uh, condition. Now what about uh, the treatment? The treatment is uh, basically antibiotics. Remember that one point, antibiotics. There are two antibiotics we use in the treatment. Number one, intravenous ceftriaxone, the rosefem. So intravenous ceftriaxone, you start with uh, that uh, antibiotic and you give that uh, antibiotic and then after that, you start patients on Bactrim. So IV ceftriaxone and Bactrim, those are the important antibiotics you need to remember in the treatment of uh, Whipple's disease. So remember this as a, um, as a, a, as a uh, condition that is treated with antibiotics. And we use drugs that cross blood-brain barrier because uh, CNS manifestations are involved in this disease. That's why you should use medications that can cross the blood-brain barrier and treat the CNS manifestations of this disease. Okay, so IV ceftriaxone, then trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. And you have to give it for a year. It's not some weeks or months. You have to treat these patients like a year with these antibiotics. And many patients, they remarkably recover from this disease, even when they have nervous manifestations. And if they are allergic to these antibiotics, you can think of hydroxychloroquine or doxycycline those medications. So remember, by the way, Whipple disease is a multi-system disease caused by Bacillus Trophorama vipelli, which is not acid fast, but it is found in past positive macrophages. That's about it, Whipple's disease. Please visit us at uh, www.drpaul.org. That is www.drpaul.org. And those of you who are taking USML clinical skills, I advise you to read this book. USML is Smasher. It has wonderful cases and uh, very, very specific uh, cases and tips that you need to remember. You don't have to waste thousands of dollars on uh, uh, expensive courses. All you need is this book, USML is Smasher and uh, get this book and uh, visit our website uh, tonight. Thank you very much and uh, have a nice day.